Uh, good morning. It's uh, just six minutes after eleven o'clock, and uh, I just—I um, know you guys are all excited about this uh, brief interview, uh, of which we will touch a bit about what's happening in Guyana. We want to be able to let you guys know some of the things that are uh, that will be um, celebrated, not only in the national park but all the places in Guyana as we celebrate 184, the 184th anniversary of emancipation in Guyana. Um, I'm hearing a little bit of a feedback, so if our technical guys can um, ensure that there is no feedback at all, and uh, let me welcome you guys to this special program on this very, very special day, uh, emancipation. Emancipation means a lot to all of us. It shouldn't mean a lot to all of us. Uh, some people may ask, what is there really to celebrate? But I tell you what, I once held that same view, right? It is a negative view. It's a negative approach in asking, what is there to celebrate? Put the political oppressors aside. Put those who don't like persons of African descent, descendants aside. Put those who don't have respect for uh, those who paved the way for the sort of freedom that we are seeing existing, not only in Guyana, but most part of the world as well. Uh, because had it not been for the sacrifices made by our African ancestors who were enslaved, they weren't enslaved through voluntary services or whatever. They were forced, they were beaten, they were robbed, they were raped. Many of our ancestors, many of our people separated around the world uh, as we travel, whether to the US, whether to Suriname, whether to Netherlands, whether to England, uh, who knows, our blood relatives are right there because they didn't get that opportunity to, uh, to head to parts of the world, uh, Guyana and other places as a family. They were tied up, they were beaten. Uh, they travel for all those uh, miles upon miles and days upon days and months upon months and beaten, raped, all manner of things. So we do have a lot to celebrate. The history, the culture is rich, despite the fact that many of those who enslaved our African ancestors um, basically deprived them, deprived us of our culture, our language, our religion, every single thing were deprived. And so 
because of that and standing up 400 years against those oppressors, against those slave masters, our African ancestors are indeed special, very, very special um, and unique set of people throughout the world. So 184 years of emancipation as we celebrate it in Guyana and other parts of the Caribbean, we must say that there is indeed something to celebrate. With us this morning is His Highness, His Royal Highness, Uganda. Uh, well, well, I got to pronounce it properly, Uganda. Because when you have such a name in terms of your African names, it's not like a Ben shop uh, that was given uh, to my to my ancestors uh, from Suriname. Uh, the name Ben shop was actually given to my great, 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 great grandmother who was um, enslaved and so she got the slave master's name from Suriname so it's a, a Ben Shop and so when you say Ben Shop um, of course we'd want to say that because it's my name or, or your last name uh, you you want to say that uh, with much sort of um, you know love and, and respect for it but a name such as uh, uh, an African name Eganda, Eganda, you say it with much um, meaning and, and passion Eganda. Uganda. And so this morning we have with us in studio, as we thank you much for sharing the link. I know it's a spontaneous program, but share the link with us, please, for us. His Royal Highness Paul Jones Uganda is with us this morning to talk a little bit about the emancipation celebrations in Guyana and to talk directly to our African brothers and sisters who are live on this program right now. So let us give a warm welcome to His Royal Highness. Paul Jones Eganda. Welcome, His Royal Highness. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ben Benshop. Thank you. And thank, thank you, you so for much. having me. Yeah. All right. Let's let's all let's start off in terms of His Royal Highness Paul Jones Eganda. A lot of people might be saying, okay, we do have uh, royalties in Guyana. Uh, we have royalties visiting Guyana and so forth and so on. But first, can you give us a brief background as to you, His Royal Highness, and of course, that beautiful last name that you got, Iganda. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. My name is a tribal name. I come from the great tribes of East Africa. These tribes are called Atekere tribes. We are found in the east of Africa, running from Uganda, Kenya, South Sudan, and Ethiopia. So the name is a legend of a great, great chief and a great ancestor. So I inherit that name. So the name Uganda comes from those tribes. And my other student name is Papa Ateker Eganda the first. So to reply to your question, a name to us means a lot. It's a spiritual. You are carrying the name of your ancestors. It explains the leadership, the trade, the origin. So that's where the name comes from. You know, Thank earlier, you. and again, yes, uh, it's it's uh, it's it's so nice to hear that um, our African brothers and sisters are able to keep their names and maintain their names and so forth. Uh, how do you feel specifically knowing that there are other African brothers and sisters who were deprived of that opportunity to carry their beautiful names uh, and instead of been forced to adopt the names of their slave masters and so forth and so on? Uh, how much do you think uh, that was able to remove in terms of our sense of belonging and knowing that we're from a rich and strong culture? Even our culture was actually stripped from us. How much do you think that had uh, in ter terms of impacted persons of African uh, descendants uh, throughout the world? Um, thank you very much, Mark. Mark, I am in Guyana with a delegation of eight African kings and queens and princesses. Our main purpose here is a spiritual journey of healing and reconnection. 
referring to your question, we know four, 500 years ago, our ancestors were taken away from Africa. Most of the people we now call the African descendants, they're Africans. Some of them came from royalty, but they have no way of finding out. My delegation has taken the initiative to come to Guyana to reconnect, to repair for spiritual healing and be with our brothers and sisters during this time of emancipation. Can you okay. hear me? Yes, I'm hearing you loud and clear, Royal Highness, loud and clear. Yes. So the issue of the name, the name is very important. The name you carry means a lot. Names are derived with the meanings. If you are given a name of a bad master, so that's also your destiny. The names are guidance. If you are given a name of an ancestor who was a robber, that means it will also run in your family ahead. So it's very important to know the meaning of your name. And that name that you are carrying is part of your destiny. So the question you've asked is very, very sensitive because as you've said, you took a name of a slave master. That slave master could have been a good man, could have been a bad man, but what they did then, as we are told, they first removed their culture, they destroyed their identity, they took away your language. Once you take off the language and the culture, then who are you? First of all, we must understand who are we? Who are you? Who are you? You must start by understanding what does your name mean? Where did it come from? If you answer those questions, you'll find your purpose and you'll follow your right destiny. Absolutely. Well said. His Ro Royal Highness is with us this morning. I know you have a packed program. You guys have been busy throughout the country, going into villages and all manner of things. And, and with those visits that you have made, along with the delegation, uh, we will touch on that briefly. But let me just remind folks that it's Emancipation 184, in 84 years of celebrating that, quote unquote, freedom. Uh, that was snatched away from our ancestors for 400 years and they were forced into all manner of things, slavery, forced, forced, everything stripped their language, their culture, every single, every single thing, uh, things were actually stripped, including their names. And that is what we have His Royal Highness uh, Uganda talking to us about briefly the importance of one's names. It's very, very important. Um, what's the connection like uh, um, between Africans, not only in Guyana, descendants of Africans, not only in Guyana, the Caribbean, but what's that connection like to Africans, uh, our brothers and sisters in the motherland of Africa? Um, Mr. Mark, I would like to tell you that very little is taught about the descendants of slave trade. We know very little about slave trade. Our ancestors, our forefathers also knew very little, those who survived. However, there are kings, royals, who were heavily involved in slave trade in one way or the other, because some of their kingdoms were destroyed. Some of the history can be found through the stories or the songs that we learn from school. It's from that kind of setup that we are able to know what's going on. What's written in books is not what it is. So we don't know much about slave trade, but what we have done under my organization, that's IDO Network International, is to bring together the cultural institution, the kings and the kingdom especially the famous kingdoms that are known for participated in transatlantic trade to do some research about what could have happened through that search we started a journey of healing we have called it 
tears of love, which has brought us to today to Guyana to be part of this special event of the Day of Emancipation. So it has been a journey. Not much information, but yes, we want to connect with our brothers and sisters in Guyana and all over the Caribbean. But just not to connect. We want to establish a strong bond. You are Africans. You will remain Africans wherever you are. But Africa remains your motherland. We know some of you, you are part of royalty. Your kingdoms were destroyed. Your ancestors were captured, taken into ships. But it does not change your royalty. If you trace your DNA, you'll find yourself in a kingdom back in Africa. This is why we are here to work with those who want to trace those roots. And also those from the continent who would like to come to Guyana and to the Caribbean to provide this kind of exchange, knowledge, understanding, and cooperation. So this is part of the mission. Absolutely, a good part of the mission indeed is that reconnection and to let uh, Africans, uh, folks of African descendants, uh, to know that they are indeed royalty and that's a true reality. Thank you so much, uh, His Royal Highness. Uh, Ganda is with us, a PAC program. Those who are listening and you're in Guyana, uh, Georgetown especially, head out there to the National Park. It starts from one o'clock. You can start preparing, uh, dress up and just go there and then enjoy yourselves. Uh, put that moment of uh, political oppression and all manner of things aside and remember the sacrifices made by our African ancestors. Remember that sacrifice, the sacrifices. Had it not been for those sacrifices made and it's a heck of a lot. They paid the price uh, with their blood. Uh, it is it is a reality. It is a fact. Uh, this is nothing fake. It is a fact. 400 years of forced slavery. Uh, we're able to build that country and prepare that nation for what it is today uh, so that other, other folks from other nations can be welcomed and to live in a free, in a free land that, were, that was actually built by the sweat and the blood of our African ancestors there's no dispute there at all what are some of the things uh, i know there's a delegation that's in guyana and uh, the delegation including yourself uh you guys have been visiting villages you guys have visited other maybe some dignitaries there in guyana can you describe uh, the moment in terms of visiting the villages and so forth and interacting with uh guyanese maybe in boxton and, and victoria and other places please oh yes uh I think that has been the most touching part of our visit here. As I've already explained to you, I am the delegation of eight royals, kings and queens, and another delegation went to Antigua and Bermuda for the same. But in our few days, we've been able to visit the Makeda African store to see what our brothers and sisters do in Guyana, it was a very amazing shop with African designs. So we were able to see that actually what we do in Africa is just what's happening here, which was quite inspiring. We also went to the Mango Walk restaurant to see what our brothers do, especially the black community. It was all amazing. We walked through the African bazaar, a marketplace seeing the fabric the architecture we all see that you have all the ingredients of what happens in africa that means the the gene the resilience the artwork the creativity is still there on thursday we are able to visit guyana university where we had a very uh, inspiring discussion with the professors we learned that there is a high rate of uh, portrait cancer in the caribbean and in Africa, we are able to treat this using our herbal medicine. So we want to have a collaboration between our universities and the universities in Guyana on herbal research. So we do very well in that. We are also able to meet the Prime Minister, uh, Brigadier Mark Phillips. We had a very good conversation. Our message to him was still to connect, prepare, and see how we can get direct transport from 
Guyana to West Africa. It takes five hours to come to Guyana, but we spend three days to get here. So this conversation would like to continue. We are also able to meet the reparations groups. We listened to their stories, we connected, and it was all beautiful. So we also had different presentation from groups. Uh, there is Agricola reparation presentation. This was also a group of people who told us their stories, very, very touching stories. And we would like to keep in connection with all these people. On Friday, we were able to meet the mayor of Georgetown. We spoke about the twinning between the mayors in Africa and the mayors in Guyana to exchange training program, education, culture, you know. So these are some of the things we would like our best uh, uh, to develop into. It's just not a one day off. We want to be able to take back what we've learned from Guyana and also send more and more people and also invite you to Africa. We are also able to visit the British High Commissioner in the in Guyana, we had a good conversation again, culture and human rights. Uh, we are honored to have lunch at Minx. Minx, uh, I think food was provided by a famous African uh, restaurant called Germans. Again, we saw the delicate, the diet, uh, uh, I mean, the way the food is prepared is more just what we eat in the continent. So we saw so many similarities. So we have also visited CARICOM. CARICOM, as you know, is my organization, which is IDO Network International, is collaborating with CARICOM uh, to see that all the African, all the Caribbean countries uh, get involved in what we are doing. We are also able to meet the leader of opposition. Uh, we had a chat because we believe that we are one. We differ in policies but we all want the best for our people. Saturday, uh, we went to New Amsterdam. We are very impressed to find a black mayor lady, spoke passionately and gave us the history of the town. That was in Babi, uh, near Hope Town. So all this was just very beautiful for us. And we have taken a lot of notes and recording to relay back to our people. We had the royal dinner on Friday, and that royal dinner, we are able to install chiefs, queen mothers, and princesses that will connect with us and continue our work even when we return back to Africa. Sunday, we were in Boxton, Tipperary Hall. That was very impressive. We were entertained. We found people speaking Swahili language. This community has insisted to keep what they could about the African language. And it was so impressive seeing them singing in Swahili, Jambo, Jambo Sana, Aweri. So they actually had African in them. They spoke with a dialect. You know, they were drumming. You know, the drum is our media of communication. So we found all these similarities. You know, you find Africa in Guyana, the real Africa. We are able to visit the museum in Boxton. We are told the story how the villagers bought back their land. That was very beautiful. How the women resisted the trade, why they should be paying taxes over the land they had paid. So this history is all documented for us. So we are very proud of our sisters and we want this resi resilience to continue that the black population, whatever they are, should rise. We are talented, we are hardworking, and God bless that. Remember, we are the origin of humankind. No, people don't want to accept it, but yes, life started in Africa. Then, of course, we had a state house dinner last night, uh, which was amazing. We met the, we met the president and the first lady, his cabinet, and all the social elite of Guyana. We had a good conversation. That was um, very good. So today, 
we are looking forward to be part to emancipation at the park and we this is one of the days that personally i have lived and i want to see i want to be part to it and i want all the kings and the queens who have come to be part to it so that they go back to their different kingdoms so that will possibly take me to tell you what kingdoms is here what kings are here but with that i think i've given you a run up what has happened in those three four days we have been in this country we've been in a number of places thank you lots lots of other places i can just imagine his royal highness the fun and the history the rich history you've gotten from those villages uh, you just spoke about that uh, history lesson that uh, the visiting team that you guys have uh, um, encountered there in that strong village of Buxton. Uh, there are other strong African villages uh, throughout Guyana, especially on the quarantine as well, and the West Coast Burbies, Belladrum, Hope Tongue. Uh, you have Kildonan, Nurni villages, and so forth on the quarantine. Uh, the next time uh, His Royal Highness and, and, and your team visit, please go to those villages, strong, strong in African culture as well. Uh, one of the things you just spoke about is the fact that uh, you heard folks speaking Swahili, right? Oftentimes, uh, many of us are guilty of running to speak other languages, uh, Russian, uh, Chinese, uh, uh, all manner of things you speak and you want to say that you're a linguist, but very, very seldom you hear people uh, say that they are learning some sort of dialect, some sort of language from the motherland, Swahili and other forms. Uh, do you think that at some point in time that should be taught throughout Guyana? Uh, Mr. Mark, that's a very important question. One of our message to the communities that we visited, your language is your identity. Through your language, that's already the beginning of your culture. The best we can do to keep reconnected to the continent is to learn a language. As we are aware now, under the African Union, all African countries are now adapting to speak Swahili as the continental language. It would be good for the black communities also to adopt this language. This language cuts across the whole of Africa. It will also aid in trade and other exchanges. So it would be my own opinion that he, people from the Caribbean should pick one language from Africa. It could be Yoruba, it could be Igbo, it could be Swahili, it could be Zulu, it could be Atekel. But at least to reconnect to your ancestor, start by picking the language of where your DNA has taken you. The easiest language to catch in Africa is Swahili. So yes, your question is, we all need to learn those languages because that is our connection. That is very, very strong. That's the beginning. Hajambo, hajambo. Jambo, sana, jambo. Swahili, indeed. And uh, every household, uh, the, 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 the fact that you're able to connect to the motherland, the language that our ancestors spoke and so forth, is oftentimes good for that because we rush out in a haste to learn other languages, other people's cultures and so forth, but uh, we tend to look down upon our own. As we speak here, I'm just, uh, to me, maybe our ancestors are speaking through me at this time as they do to you and others. It's saying to me, not every handshake, even though some of us who look like us are not necessarily for us, uh, some of us who look like like us have done a lot to destroy us. Some of us who look like us have destroyed our culture, help others to destroy our cultures and so forth and so on. And I don't know, for some reason, that spirit in me just say, our ancestral spirit in me just say to remind folks and not anything to be uh, disrespectful to you, His Royal Highness, at all. But I'm just maybe trying to show off that our ancestor spirit speaks through me sometimes as well. Uh, you spoke about meeting a, a bunch of different people in Guyana, especially. But, you know, um, that conversation is for another time. Indeed, one of the things that's touching as well is the universities in Africa and the fact that uh, folks in Guyana or African brothers and sisters should find ways and means to connect to some of that. Those uh, real universities out there in Africa as well. Uh, so 
as we look to wrap up our time here, um, what are some of uh, the things you're looking forward to um, at the National Park along with the delegation today? It starts around one o'clock and, and we want folks to go out there, whether it's the National Park today, go out there in your numbers, just go out there, please. It's 184 years of celebrating freedom. It's something to celebrate because our African ancestors fought for that freedom, demanded that freedom. Uh, go ahead, His Royal Highness. Talk yeah. about the event. Today we we definitely looking forward to the Emancipation Day. We shall be there around two o'clock, I think. I will be leading my delegation. With me, I'll be will be Papa Emormor, Papa Iteso, Paul Sande Emolot the king of Atekere tribes of East Africa, Karamoja, Teso, Nyangatom, Toposa. So all those tribes, we shall have that king who is the chairman of the king's council in Africa who has come to represent all the other kingdoms that could not come. Also with me today at the, at the park, we shall have her Royal Majesty, Sincere Puna Kumalo Muselikazi III from South Africa, who is Muselikazi Kingdom, is a breakaway of the Zulu Kingdom during the Shaka Zulu days. So these are very, very strong kingdoms in South Africa. Also, I shall have Princess Precious Lindiwe, uh, who is also from the Muselikazi Kingdom. We shall also have Princess Sepi Mutlong, who is from the Batowa Kingdom of South Africa. We shall also have with us our chiefs, uh, Chief Samson Esudu, Chief Robinson, and the, we shall also have some of the people in our organization who are keen to do business with the people of Guyana, especially with our black communities. These are successful investors in South Africa who are into property, hospitality, and they really want to see how they can reconnect business-wise, do trade, do uh, uh, investments between Guyana and the continent. So we shall have all these people with us. So the delegation of the kings and the queens represent different parts of Africa different kingdoms, different tribes. We all speak different languages, but we are connected by Swahili and other languages. Of course, I speak very many languages, but for the purpose of today, we are connected by one language that we all do speak. So for the day today, we want to reconnect. We want to repair. It's a spiritual healing for us. Our presence at the park, means a lot not only to us but also to the continent it also means a lot to our brothers and sisters who were taken away 400 years ago from africa this is the beginning of the healing it's the beginning of repair it's the beginning of reconnection and we want this brotherhood to continue Next year, it will be bigger and bigger and bigger as we go all across the Caribbean. But we come with one word, peace and love, and come back to your roots. Keep your culture, keep your language. We are one, one blood, one continent. Bayete. Asante, Sana. Asante, Sana. Asante, Karibu. Asante, Karibu, indeed. Uh, before before we go, though, uh, one of the things that I would love for uh, persons of African descent know that wearing African attire, uh, African clothing, and so forth, there's nothing to be ashamed of. It's uh, it's power, it's strength, it's richness. Uh, what message do you have for, especially our younger uh, brothers and African brothers and sisters residing in Guyana? Please, that message is Royal Highness. Your culture begins from your dressing. If you want to deny your ancestors, then you are blocking your luck. 
it's pride to be black. I know for sure the blacks may not be as empowered as other communities in the world. Even here, we've seen that the black communities are really struggling. But it does not mean that that's what we are. We are better than that. What we need here is unity and continue with the resilience, our ancestors, our forefathers. Imagine those people who bought the villages, how connected they are, how united they were to come up with the money to buy the villages. What about us, the young ones? You need to honor your ancestors. You need to honor your parents. Black is beauty. Black is strength. Black is wisdom. The difference in color is just the pigment. Life started in Africa. Many people will argue, but yes, I encourage all the black community, wherever you are in the world, embrace your roots. Trace your roots and you'll be at peace. Find what your name means. If not the right name, go through your DNA and get the right name and change your destination. Thank you. Absolutely. Such an honor to have you here this morning with us. Uh, grace us with your presence in the studios of 107.1 FM. Uh, I'll just say, Mungu uh, Abariki. Mungu Abariki. Mungu Abariki. Asana sana. Asana sana. So uh, I, I'm showing off my Swahili, actually. And yes, I can I, see. You can. That is very good. I yes, hope you do. Sorry, his work, Royal Highness. Sorry, I, I don't want to speak over you at all. But no, 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 it's okay. I am just happy that he, uh, the Swahili you are speaking is quite very good. Uh, even the accent comes quite well. Thank you. So may the Lords, may the ancestors bless you. But you, um, you are the voice of the voiceless. So keep doing what you are doing. Your voice is what we need to repeat what we should have been saying long time ago. I know it. there is nothing too late to change. Your voice, we count on you to speak to our people that they should not be ashamed of being black. We should be proud and remain proud of being black. Black is beauty, black is strength, as I've already said. I take this opportunity to thank you, first of all, for accepting me to speak to my people. And I would also like to thank our host here, uh, Chief Eric Phillips, who has worked very hard from the time we invited him to South Africa, where he was installed as a chief under the Musilikazi Kingdom. He made his pledge, he made his word, that he wanted to see the African royals come to Guyana as a starting point. And indeed, today, we are here. It's the beginning and there's more to come. We want to go back with the message that we love you wherever you are. We love you and reconnect back with us. Reconnect with your ancestors. Keep your culture. Black is beauty. Resilience. Protect what is yours. Thank you. Indeed. Thank you so much, His Royal Highness. Black is beautiful. Don't let anybody tell you anything otherwise. Uh, be safe there in Guyana. I know you guys are going to have a splendid time, a royal time out there at the National Park and especially meeting lots and lots of Guyanese. We want to see photographs of thousands upon thousands and thousands of people out there at the National Park and other places out in the quarantine celebrating 184th anniversary of our emancipation. Thank you so much, His Royal Highness. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Bye, it. Yeah, bye, it. All right. So one of the things that you'd want to do, and uh, 
you know, uh, many, many years ago, I thought that uh, Swahili was something that I was very passionate and uh, for some reason I dropped it. Otherwise, I would have been uh, talking in, in, in every, every for the past half hour in Swahili, Swahili to his, his Royal Highness. Uh, so head down there to the National Park in beautiful Georgetown, Guyana. You can't miss it. Put on something, put on uh, whatever it is, but put on something and, and just go out there and celebrate. There is something to celebrate. There is that richness, uh, the culture, uh, the sacrifices made by, by our African ancestors. That is what you're celebrating. Don't say that there's nothing to celebrate. I understand that from a political standpoint, especially uh, what's happening there in Guyana. Uh, there's really people of African descent don't feel that there is much to celebrate, especially the, the form of modern day oppression that they're faced with in that beautiful country where that where uh, their contributions have been disrespected and ignored their their everyday living being disregarded as though they're some sort of third or fourth class citizen living in a country that was actually built by the sweat and blood of our african ancestors so we shouldn't be apologetic in saying that saying that particular part it is the truth we shouldn't run away from that we shouldn't be afraid to say it, it is the truth our beautiful country guyana was built in sweat and blood of our african ancestors that's the truth rich culture rich people the language stolen taken away from our ancestors the culture taken away from our ancestors we've got to get back to that we cannot allow folks who don't know our history folks who may not even know their own history uh, to ridicule us to basically uh, think that we are nothing that we are worth nothing 20 something years ago i recall that uh, starting a program called music africa i did that on channel nine and some other places music africa uh, it was to reconnect our African brothers and sisters, especially the younger brothers and sisters in Guyana, and to let them know that there's nothing wrong in being proud to be an African. Absolutely nothing is wrong. Other folks are proud to be who they are. You should not be ashamed to be an African. Head down to the National Park, have fun, guys. And um, we'll be watching out for some of those uh, who look kind of look like us, going to want to run around and, and, and pretend as though they're celebrating with us. And then tomorrow, they're back joining with individuals who don't like us to oppress us as a people in that country. Be careful with them. Be careful with those who rush out there for the photo op to make it appear that there is this one Guyana, when in fact it's a divided Guyana under that political rulership right now in that country. Don't be fooled. Hopefully I'll see you guys later. Thank you all so much for tuning in this morning. It's an impromptu uh, interview, and I thank His Royal Highness. I thank Eric Phillips, my friend, who has been... Um, he is now... Uh, chief chief eric phillips and others in guyana thank you all so much again you know uh, let's be honest the, we we can be um, emotional and just to talk about the sacrifices made by our african ancestors and how those who can't even walk in the footsteps or the shoes of our ancestors or even most of us they can do that but they want to ridicule us and call us all manner of names. Ignore those uh, uh, individuals. They're not worth it. They're not even worth for us to even walk next to, much less to be bothered and concerned about calling us names. We don't feel like fly on our shoulders, right? Head down to the National Park. Be proud of who you are. Head down to wherever you want. Whether it's under quarantine, head down there. If you're not in Guyana, call your friends, call your relatives, and tell them it's important to go out there. God bless you all, and happy emancipation. There is something to celebrate. Let's celebrate. In the name of our ancestors, there is something to celebrate. God bless you all, and again, happy emancipation to all of you.
Thank you. 